Hello, welcome to a Gibbs Cam demonstration from Midwest Cam Solutions. This demonstration is for a 2.5D milling uh, SOLIDWORKS model part. Um, well, we're going to start off here opening up the part file. So we're going to go to open, we're going to select the file types for SOLIDWORKS file types. And in my list of files here, I'm going to grab uh, this little sprocket part. We'll open that up. And we'll, we'll bring this into a 3-axis vertical mill. This is the part. And there's our little solid model of the part. Now the top view is looking down at through the part. We want to look at maybe at this face. So if you turn face selection on, you can select the face you want to align to the CS and select align face to CS. Re-shrink wrap will readjust the stock envelope tighter on the part. Um, first thing I think I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do some milling uh, of these slots and pockets. So I'm going to go grab a process for doing slots. Now I have all these little processes saved for all different slot sizes. I'm going to grab a 312 with pre-drilling, turn the profiler on, and this green grid pops up. You can slide this, the depth of this uh, grid so you can see the shapes you want to machine. I'm going to select these shapes and say do it. We just pre-drilled all those holes and milled those slots. So I drilled an entry hole and I drilled the corners and left a little stock for the milling. If I want to machine this pocket here, we can just select it and say do it, and it just offset pocketed this, this uh, cutout. Now in my process, if I want to use a uh, offset with cleanup and make a very large cut width, you can use this to save a lot of cut time so you're not limiting yourself to just half the tool width. It works really great for, for all floor finishing, of course, but any tools that you want to have larger cut widths, use offset with cleanup. And pre-milling was still involved with this, so it's going to drill those corners in that shape and alleviate some of the uh, stock when the end mill gets in those corners. But now we have all the, the milling done. Um, I also might want to have uh, a stock that is round. So I'm going to ex extrude a circle off the model. And then in my work group, we're going to right click and assign that to be stock extruded in z-axis. So now when we hit the CPR, we'll see that round stock. And you can have a simple shape be represented as your stock, or it could be a solid model, of course. So now let's do the holes. I'm going to select the hole model and go to Hole Manager. Um, in your preferences in Hole Manager, you can set how far you want to wrap it to the top of a part and how far you want to go through the through holes. In the Set Dialog Data uh, screen, we can set it to only do holes in a curtain, the current CS. Now when I run AFR, it's going to scan the model and build all these little attributes, the whole data, uh, from the model. Um, if I group them up, there's three groups. If I double click a group, it'll highlight the group and show you the groups that you have ready to machine. If I click Auto Wizard, it'll build the tools processes with, with no work. And you can select them all and they're all done with one click. If I want to use Whole Wiz, I can walk it through and see what we're going to build here. I want to put a 10,000th edge break on the part on the machining, it does not have it on the model. And we'll use a 45 degree uh, chamfer angle. I'm going to create a spot drill versus a center drill and a drill. And next, we'll let it build a process and we'll build that operation. So now we just spotted and drilled all those holes. Um, and so one group, we can just uh, four clicks through and, and kind of drive it and understand exactly what's going to happen. But now we just spotted and drilled those holes. So if I go to the next group and go to Hole Wiz, I'll do the same thing. I'm going to put a 10,000th edge break and a 45 and say next. We just need a drill. We'll let it create it. Next, we'll build the process and then build the operations for those. The last group, I'm going to go to Whole Wiz and it knows it's an 18,000 chamfer size because it is in the model. And I'll just say next. We'll let it build the drill. Next, we'll let it build the process and we'll build those operations. So now all the holes are done. Now as we uh, piled them in here, it spot and drilled accordingly as we added them. If we uh, click the sort ops button on the machining pellet, it's going to sort them so everything's going to be in sequence. So now it'll do all the, the uh, spotting all together and all the drilling all together. So we're doing the milling first and it spots all the holes. And you can always reorganize your operations by drop and dragging them in any order that you wish. Um, let's say I want to go back to some of the milling here, and I want to chamfer these edges. 
So if I deselect my processes over here and grab a process for chamfer milling, we can just say redo it and we just chamfered all those slots. If I grab the next group of milling that did the, the cutout, we can do the same thing and just reuse this process again and again every day and add ops without having to create anything. Now these ops that we added with tool 7's are the chamfer mills, they're the last tool. I'm just going to sort the ops and now all the chamfering is going to be at the end of the file. So the order you build things really doesn't mean too much because you can always sort them uh, with a click or you can drop and drag and move them or reorganize your tools and sort ops and uh, takes care of all that headache. This is a quick, simple little part for uh, Gibbs Cam, uh, two and a half D solids. Uh, hope you enjoyed a little presentation, and uh, have a great day.